This is a live channel's television event. You're tuned into your award-winning station, Channels Television, and at this juncture, you're tuned into your award-winning TV station, Channels Television. At this juncture, we interrupt our regular programming to hook up with a live event at the Eco Hotel Lagos, an interactive session with the Katsima State Governor Ibrahim Sheo Shema. Do stay tuned. Good evening. Welcome to this special live broadcast on Channels Television, reaching you from the prestigious Echo Signature Hotel on Victoria Island, Lagos. I am Modeli Sharafa Yusuf. About an hour ago, the outgoing governor of Kusina State, Ahaji Ibrahim Shehu Shema, received the Sun Outstanding Performance Exit Award from the Sun newspapers for all the great work he's adjudged to have done in his eight years at the Elm in Kusina State. Governor Ibrahim Shehu Shema kindly joins us tonight on this special program and I want to thank him very kindly. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Also here on this special broadcast, uh, Ken Ubechi, Editor-in-Chief, Political Economist Magazine. Thank you, Ken, for joining us. My pleasure. Also here is uh, Ismail Omik Bidon, Assistant Editor Northwest of the Sun Newspapers. Thank you, Ismail. My pleasure. And Garda Dean Mohammed, the editor in chief of Raria Newspapers and deputy president of Nigerian Guild of Editors. Thank you, Garba, for joining us on this special Thank program. You. My pleasure. Before we go into the question and answer session, let me quickly uh, tell you a little bit about Governor Ibrahim Shehu Sheba. He was the State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice between August 1999 and May 2003 during Governor Umaru Musa Yadra's first term as Governor of Kasina State. He later served as the Deputy National Chairman Northwest Zone of the PDP as well as Chairman of the PDP National Disciplinary Committee and Chairman Governing Council People's Democratic Institute. Governor Shema also served as chairman of the governing board of the Nigeria Airspace Management Agency, NAMA, between December 2005 and November 2006. He became governor of Kasina State in 2007 and won re-election in 2011. Well, um, let me start from you, Ken. You want to start the first salvo? Well, why not? Um, Your Excellency, there's something that actually has a intrigued me about you and your tenure in Katsina State is the, the culture of peace and serenity Absolutely. that I noticed within your eight year reign. But I also, also know that Katsina State is contiguous to some flashpoint states, contiguous to Niger Republic, which itself presents some security challenges. But you've been able to foster peace, a culture of peace, an atmosphere of peace. Can you tell us what you did that bequitted to the people this atmosphere and environment of peace in eight years? Thank you very much. Um, uh, first of all, peace is the business of all in every society. When we came into office in 2007, there are major challenges, especially on political thuggery, popularly known in Katsina as Kaurai. These chaps will go on block roads, and injure people, attack shops, attack homes. And I felt there is no way I can sit there as governor of Katsina State and fail to stop this wanton destruction of lives and property. Uh, I therefore set up a special team, a task force, that look into uh, the way and means in which we can stop this uh, you know, uh, act of thuggery in my state. Within no time, we set up a special task force that encompasses the armed forces, the police, I mean the army, the police, uh, the civil defense, the SSS, and we cracked down on this guy right? before you know it, because now it became a safe haven for everybody to live in happily and peacefully. Indeed, uh, security challenges are everywhere in Nigeria and everywhere in the world, especially in the last couple of years. We have our own share of challenges in Nigeria, and we have our own share of challenges in Katina as well. But fundamentally, we adopted a strategy of proactive policing 
like it's happened in every advanced nation of the world. You do not wait until a crime happens before you act. You have to take cue from the happenings in society. You have to have first class uh, information network and uh, intelligence reporting. And then you have to combine all of this along with community involvement in the policing of the affairs of a town, a village, or even a state. Our traditional institutions were brought on board to assist us in stemming the tide of any uh, criminal activity going on in the state. The traditional, the, the religious leaders are not left out. The women, groups, and uh, families and homes were always uh, quick in responding or reporting a crime that is about to take place. Indeed, we share a border with the uh, Niger Republic. One of the major challenges or other major challenges are equally met on ground with the issue of this clash between Fulani and uh, you know, farmers in my state. There are a lot of uh, you know, cattle rearing in Fulani that come from as far as Chad, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, to Niger, to Katina, and to other parts of northern Nigeria. This always pose a threat. So we have what we call the Kaura Committee Setup. Kaura is one of the kingmakers in Katina traditional title holder who is very versed in the knowledge of the relationship between Fulani and farmers. And we set up a special task force. And that task force was busy trying to coordinate and bring peace among Fulani and farmers and clear the passage upon which rearing animals can pass without interfering with farm produce. Throughout my first term and a substantial part of my second term, we never had any incidences of this clash between Fulani and farmers, which hitherto used to consume a lot of lives. So we were able to put that in check. And then coming back to other aspects of security, I border with Zamfara, I border with Kaduna, Kano, and Jigawa, and I border with Niger Republic. All of these states I mentioned have had one challenge or the other, major challenge or the other about security. And uh, of course, because we are interested in working as a team, because in security activities you have to bring everybody to the table. Absolutely. Uh, we brought uh, the SSS, the police, the civil defense, the army, and other services to work together as a team and to look at areas and even NDLA to share in you know, the issues of uh, crime prevention and crime reporting. And we did not uh, exclude others, even like road safety. Yep. We involved them because you need the road safety to continuously be checking on vehicles that are coming and going, be checking on particulars, and uh, be observant of events happening around communities, around societies, and around the state. And we equally invited the security agencies of neighboring Niger Republic. I border two states in Niger, uh, Mayadi and Zindar. And all the commissioners and six service chiefs there always partner with us to work towards a peaceful you know, coexistence in our respective countries and uh, in the state of Katsina. Uh, we didn't stop there. We asked the security agencies what their requirements are for keeping the peace and for maintaining law and order. And we are always up and running to give them what they need as much as we can within our minimum resources to ensure that we give them maximum support in order for them to effectively carry out their constitutional responsibilities. In a nutshell, uh, it's an all-encompassing job. And I told the agencies, the leaders of those agencies, that 24-7, 24 hours, seven days a week, 30 or 31 days in a month, and 365 days in a year, everybody in the security office is, 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 uh, is permitted to knock on my door once there's any security challenge anywhere in the state. In fact, I have a system where I receive reportage on a simple as an accident of a vehicle in my state or my, or my GSM. Once there's an accident in any corner, remote corner, how matter how remote the location is in Katina, the affected agency said that will send me a text that an accident happened yeah. between motorcyclists, yeah. you know, my suggestion, and I can, I can respond easily. If it's a major event, I can equally respond. So we have a network of information gathering and utilization of security and uh, intelligence information. And indeed, we have succeeded in substantially keeping the peace in Katina. On top of that, the nature of Katina people is they are very hospitable people. It may be the only state in Nigeria, state capital in northern Nigeria, that has no segregation amongst Nigerians who are living in Katina. I had an occasion to have visitation from a team that came to see me after I was sworn in as governor in 2007. I received a notation that non-indigenous in Katina state wanted to see me. I immediately called them, their leadership, and I told them, Listen, if you want to see me from now moving forward, do not call yourself no indigenous in your own country. 
because Nigerians have this penchant of calling themselves non indigenous yes. because they live elsewhere from where they are born. <laughs> and I felt that is wrong. If you take developed nations or advanced countries in the world, like the United States of America, UK and others, wherever you live is your home. Yes. People are proud of their nation, are proud of their flag, are proud of the unity, are proud of their, their system. But here, people living in their own nation, somebody in, from Katina, living, let's say, in Port Harcourt or Lagos, who call themselves non indigenous so I said I will not, not take that. Instead, they asked me to give them a name that I prefer. I said you are all indigenous Nigerians simply living in Katina. Because you are not living where you are born does not make you non indigenous in the state. So as a result, Katina from history uh, is probably the only um, uh, state capital in northern Nigeria that I know that does not have to do with that or Sabongari. You can check your records yeah. where people who are not born originally from there are segregated Absolutely. to live in and all that. So there is a lot of history behind why Katina, you know, is a, is, is a, is a united location for all Nigerians. And indeed, I am very happy and very lucky to have had the opportunity thrust upon me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to drive the helm of leadership of Katina in the last eight years. Before I go on to, uh, to get Ismail to ask his first question, you talked about the how you solved the Fulani herdsmen and the farmers clashes, yeah. clashes in Katina. It seems an intractable one all over the country. What would you, be your recommendations for solving this problem pan-Nigeria? My recommendation is the leadership of the Fulani gurus all over the nation and the leadership of the farmers group all over the country, the traditional institutions that are engaged in the different locations of the country must come together and agree. Because you know, historically, since independence or pre-independence, that is what's popularly known as cattle rules. Yeah. Those cattle rules are designated for cattle, uh, you know, rearers as far as Burkina Faso, uh, Chad, Cameroon, Niger, Nigeria, and it's established route that was designed by the colonial masters. So the people who want to rear the cattle can go. You know here, we don't have pastoral facilities for cattle rearers to stay in one place and graze their, their, their cattle. So they say they have to move. But in the process... How feasible is that? It is very feasible because there is leadership of every group existing. Of course there are factions, even among the Fulani groups, there's Miyati Allah, Kautul Hori, there's another Miyati Allah group. Among the, Fla, the farmers group, there are different sets of groups. If you find the group that is headed in the northeast, it's different from one from north central, from northwest, and even here in southern part of Nigeria. What is required is sincerity of purpose, dedication and commitment to resolve the crisis, and then participation of these groups that I told you, the leaders of the groups, the traditional rulers, and of course, a government at all levels, local, state, and even federal, must have a united front, a common platform, upon which these people will relate and address the concerns of each other. For the cattle to pass happily and simply, and for the farmers to have their produce not affected by the movement of the cattle. Ismail. Your Excellency, uh, just shortly after you were sworn in as governor in 2007, there was this um, challenge over how to deal with them. Um, some youths that were collecting monthly street stipends. Stipend, 5,000 naira. Who yeah. were not going to school. Well, I, I was told then that um, you said you can't be paying those who are going to school mm -hmm. to go to school and then pay those who perhaps don't do anything apart from smoking and causing trouble. Yeah. Now you talked about how you were able to uh, eradicate Togo in Casino State. Now these youths, where are they today? What are they doing? Yeah. You know, when I came on board in 2007, like I mentioned earlier, there are a group of youth that go around Katina calling themselves Kaurai. Uh, and uh, they engage in Thagari, basically. And they are political groups, most of them. So I decided that under my watch, I'll not wait and watch the kids or children of the poor peasants be destroyed. I was a governor, or incoming governor, I wanted, or like every other responsible person, wanted my children to grow and be better citizens for this country, go to school, uh, you know, graduate from school, uh, start a living, earn a living, and be responsible, contribute to society. Why would anybody, in his right sense, want to waste the life of a child of a peasant by engaging him in political theory or sending him on drug-related issues? So I now came up with a program that all youths that are engaged in this violence have an option. We set up a small facility initially which we call the Katina Class Village. And we set up about 18 different trades there. We had consultants to run the place and resource persons. They are teaching our children how to repair and maintain GSM handsets. 
We are teaching our children how to build, break and build computers in partnership with Cisco representative in Nigeria. We are teaching our children, both male and female, how to do film and photography in collaboration with the Nigerian Film Institute.